Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. All right, so here's these carbs, and if you look, this is the, the bowl off of the top one. You can see all that crud in there. All that yucky that'll plug you up. That's the top one. Here's the center. It's not as bad, but it's still got the yuck in it. And then there's the bottom. All that yuck in there. So they're all three in need of a good cleaning. So there's the triplets. So we'll get to cleaning. Up my pickup there. Little float. Take out the little rubber team. It's not too awfully bad in there. So I'm gonna reach in the throat here. See if I can pop that emulsion tube out of there. Yeah, I'll show you. Shibby. So, that all cleaned up, and and three little holes right there. You want to make sure you you run a needle through them, a little piece of wire or whatever. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wash this with some purple power and all. And then I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for just a little bit. Then I'll take regular rattle, rattle can, carb cleaner, and we will make it beautiful. We will make it beautiful again. We make it beautiful. All right, so this one is about ready to go in the ultrasonic cleaner for just a bit because I've got about all the yuck I can get off. The outside, I think. So just clean it up. Make it look a lot of prettier. Now, while I got the body parts and all in the cleaner, you take your little wires like that. Eek, eek, eek. Each one of them little holes. You gotta do that. You gotta do that. In out, in out. You gotta do that. So we'll do that to all them little holes. Then I'll get the body. We'll reassemble everything. And then we'll do the center. Actually, 
the top, the center. I'm doing the bottom right now. And all three will be done in the same fashion. You understand this. Um, and like I said, I will take, once I get the body back, I'll take and put the regular rattle can, um, spray all the orifices out with regular old intake carb cleaner. Then I'll hit them with compressed air. Then I'll hit them with tri-flow. And then I'll reassemble everything. And then we'll do that two more times. All right, I'm on carburetor number two, and I wanted to show you this. If you look right in here, see that? Kind of yuck in this thing. Green boogers. Not good. So I just wanted to show you that. I found that all in there, about a good eighth inch thick almost. But the bottom side didn't look too bad. This is the center carburetor. Okay. There's something I wanted to point out. I wanted to print it out to you. White rag. Not a blue rag or a black rag, white rag. And you say, what? That ain't important what kind of rag I use. White rag. It's important. The reason why I use a white rag, even though I'm gonna take my little needles, my little wires, my little pokey thingies, like that, and I'm gonna stick in them little holes. If you take a white rag and hold your little deal like that, your jets and stuff, and rock it back and forth, you can see through the holes. You can actually see them if they're plugged. And uh, I wanted to point that out. If you put a white rag down, then when you take the emulsion tube and so forth and just kind of rock the holes back and forth, I can't show it to you on camera. You just have to trust me. Get you a bright colored white rag. Well, I guess all white rags would be bright colored. <laughs> but yeah, you know, people hold them up to the light and everything, and that's fine. But I found that if you if you take a white cloth and clean your carburetors on that, you can you can see it. That white just jumps through those holes, and you can see if the little, I mean, even the smallest ones like this show up really nice. I can see whether they're plugged or not. So. I wanted to print that out. That's why I use a white rag. Because you can't see better. And you can see them. Orifices. That was the word I was looking for. Orifice. That's wrong. It's orifus. Or orifice. Orifus. It's one of them. So I wanted to point that out. And there is a shot of three nice clean Yamaha triplets and if you go back and look at the block and everything before we started she cleaned up pretty good so yeah I just wanted to show you that without the uh, I can't really do much with the link you know showing you because my shifter is hitting well duh there we go so the triplets, they triple. All right. So let me get it finished, buttoned up, put the recoil back and air silencer, and we'll get this thing in the tank. Well, okay. We got everything all buttoned back up, I think. And uh, you are gonna see what I am gonna see. There, choke, neutral, let's see what we get. What the hell was that? Hmm. Nothing. Not good. 
hook everything up. not running on three cylinders. So, let's get her out of the tank do a sparky check. Either we still got a plug cob of denature, or we got a spark issue. Let me get a spark checker hooked up to this thing. Those three. I would normally put a rag on that bottom, but it's turned upright, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. Let's see what we got. Ah, I see two. How about you? We ain't got no fire on the middle plug. Right there, that should be sparking. But in no go spark. So we probably got a bad coil. And you say, well, why you say a bad coil? It could be a wire, it could be anything. I say probably a bad coil because the CDI troubleshooting and the manual says loss of spark on a single cylinder suspect coil loss of spark on all cylinders or all cylinders of one bank in the case of a V46 motor suspect pack so we're going to play with that coil a little bit Okay, so I replaced that center coil. You can see it's got a different color spark plug lead on it and so forth. And uh, here's the dead one. So let's see what we get now. Watch right in here. Hopefully there'll be three. Ah yeah. Look like three popping to me popping. So let me put the plugs back in, get it in the tank. I'll be right back. All right, let's see if she runs any better.
guy might tell me something different. Let's start. Yeah, the bottom celery fire. Well, it's funny, I was getting fire on a spark checker, but uh, I've got lots of those coils and it only takes a minute to replace it. I'm gonna Okay, let's see what we get. That's better. Sounds good. That's what I want to talk about. Now you can see the Sparky Checker. We know the VRO works. Woo! <laughs> Sounds good now. Forward. Neutral roll. Rivers. the uh, spark checker but then I put it in here you know and lost my spark on that bottom coil and it was the middle coil that wasn't sparking on the spark checker so I replaced that coil then I had spark on all three then I put it in the tank and I lost it on the bottom and so I said you know let me go over these wires before I replace that coil. And sure enough, it wasn't a bad coil. It was a bad technician. I forgot to hook up, or I missed the ground wire. I thought I had put the bolt through the coil, bolt spot, and the ground wire. But these little ground wires you see right here, I missed it. It was just kind of slapping up against the block. That's why I had spark at one time and then lost it when I put it in a tank. But she's a runner. And look at those pretty clean triplets. Ain't they lovely? So we had a bad coil in the center. We took care of that. And had a unhooked ground wire on the bottom. Took care of that. The carburetors are clean. And uh, yeah. Yes. 
She's on there now. Oh boy, yeah, let me put you over here, let that smoke clear out. We did the Mercury 40, we did the Yamaha 40, now we're going to get on this 30 Johnson. That's going to be a wrap on this one. I want to thank you for watching and if you would please hit that subscribe button and come along with us. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for part three on Inside Out Boys with Cody Bass.